In addition to the work that we will do within our own family, Nephi taught that we labor diligently to persuade our brethren to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every one of us has the blessing and responsibility of sharing the gospel. Some of those who need the gospel in their lives are not yet members of the church. Some were once among us, but need to feel again the joy they felt when they embraced the gospel at an earlier time in their lives. The Lord loves both the person who has never had the gospel as well as the person who is returning to him. To him and to us, it doesn't matter. It's all one work. It's the worth of souls, whatever their condition, that is great to our Heavenly Father, His Son, and to us. The work of our Heavenly Father and His Son is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of His children, regardless of their circumstances. Our blessing is to help in this great work. President Monson explained how we can help when he said, our missionary experiences have to be current. It's not enough to sit back and ponder former experiences. To be fulfilled, you have to continue to naturally and normally share the gospel. The work of naturally and normally sharing the gospel with those we care about and love will be the work and joy of our lives. Let me tell you about two such experiences. Dave Orchard grew up in Salt Lake City where most of his friends were members of the church. They were a great influence on him. In addition to church leaders in his neighborhood constantly inviting him to activities, uh, his friends did the same. Even though he didn't join the church at that time, his growing up years were blessed by the influence of good LDS friends and church-sponsored activities. After he entered college, he moved away from his home, and most of his friends left on missions. He missed their influence in his life. One of Dave's high school friends was still home. This friend was meeting every week with his bishop in an effort to put his life in order and be able to serve as a missionary. He and Dave became roommates, and as would be both natural and normal, they talked about why he wasn't then serving as a missionary and why he was meeting frequently with the bishop. The friend expressed his gratitude and respect for his bishop and the opportunity to repent and serve. He then asked Dave whether he would like to come to the next interview. What an invitation. But in the context of their friendship and circumstances, it was both natural and normal. Dave agreed and was soon meeting with the bishop himself. This led to Dave's decision to meet with the missionaries. He received a testimony that the gospel is true and a date for his baptism was set. Dave was baptized by his bishop and a year later, Dave Orchard and Catherine Evans were married in the temple. They have five beautiful children. Catherine is my little sister. I will be forever grateful to this good friend who, together with a good bishop, brought Dave into the church. As Dave spoke of his conversion as bore his testimony regarding these events, he asked the question, so, was it worth it? Was all the effort of friends and youth leaders and my bishop over all the years worth the effort to have just one boy be baptized? Pointing to Catherine and his five children, he said, well, at least for my wife and our five children, the answer is yes. Whenever the gospel is shared, it is never just one boy. Whenever conversion happens or someone returns to the Lord, it is a family that is saved. As Dave and Catherine's children have grown, they have all embraced the gospel. One daughter and two sons have served as missionaries, and one just received his call to serve in the Alpine German-speaking mission. The two oldest have married in the temple, and the youngest is now in high school, faithful in every way. Was it worth it? <laughs> oh, yes, it was worth it. Sister Eileen Waite attended the same state conference where Dave Orchard told of his conversion experience. Throughout the conference, all she could think of was her own family, and particularly her sister, Michelle, who had long been away from the church. Michelle was divorced and trying to raise four children. Eileen felt impressed to send her a copy of Elder Ballard's book, Our Search for Happiness, together with her testimony, which she did. The very next week, another friend told Eileen that she too had felt that she should contact Michelle. This friend also wrote Michelle a note, sharing her testimony and expressing her love. 
Isn't it interesting how often the Spirit works on several people to help one in need? Time passed. Michelle called Eileen and thanked her for the book. She said that she was beginning to recognize the spiritual void in her life. Eileen told her that she knew that the peace she was seeking could be found in the gospel. She told her that she loved her and wanted her to be happy. Michelle began to make changes in her life. Soon she met a wonderful man who was active in the church. They married and a year later were sealed in the Ogden Temple. Recently, her 24-year-old son was baptized. To the others in Michelle's family and all others who do not yet know that this church is true, I invite you to prayerfully consider whether the church is true. Allow your family and friends and missionaries to help. When you know that it is true, and it is, come join with us by taking the same step in your life. The end of this story has not yet been written, but blessings have been given to this wonderful woman and her family as those who loved her acted on a prompting and in a natural and normal way shared their testimony and invited her to come back. I've thought a lot about these two experiences. One young man work was working to put his own life in order, and he helped another young man who was seeking the truth. One woman shared her testimony and her faith with her sister who had been away from the church for 20 years. If we will pray and ask Heavenly Father who we can help and promise to act on the promptings he gives us, letting us know how we can help, he will answer our prayers and we will become instruments in his hands to do his work. Acting in love upon the promptings given by the Spirit becomes the catalyst. As you have listened to these experiences of naturally and normally sharing the gospel with those you care about, many of you have had the same experience that Eileen Waite had. You've thought of someone to whom you should reach out and either invite them to come back or share with them your feelings about the gospel of Jesus Christ. My invitation is to act without delay on that prompting. Talk to your friend or family member. Do it in a natural and normal way. Let them know of your love for them and for the Lord. Missionaries can help. My counsel is the same that President Monson has given so many times from this very pulpit. Never delay a prompting. As you act on the prompting and do it with love, watch as our Heavenly Father uses your willingness to act to bring about a miracle in your life and in the life of the person you care about.